I get asked a lot of times about the wiring I've done on my truck and how does it work. I have a nice little diagram that I've drawn up for people and I send it to people all the time to see how I've plumbed up my truck and how I've got everything wired and connected. And if it's not the first question, usually the second question they ask is how, does the, how do you make the relays work? How do the relays work like they're supposed to? So tonight I thought I'd discuss that a little bit. These are two relays I got sitting here. And on the bottom you see a bunch of little tabs. And I don't think my camera is going to focus very well on this. Eh, maybe not. Well, I've kind of drawn it out on this piece of paper here. So you'll see written on the bottom of the relay there's a 30, an 87A, an 87. And you'll hear people refer to, and you'll see in my drawing, I call it NO and NC. This stands for normally open and normally closed. C stands for common. So you hook your common power or your common device up to the common and the other end to wherever it's going to go. These can work for turning things on and off, uh, switching a light, switching anything really. It depends on what you want to do. Now these doesn't have to only apply to a 12 volt system. It doesn't only have to apply to one connection. They make relays in all kinds of different styles, all kinds of different voltages. We're just going to concentrate basically on what happens when you hook up to a relay. So I'm going to put my pen down and it'll display a switch. So NC, normally closed. When the relay is not energized, as it sits right here on the table, it is sitting in a normally closed state. This is its normal state, nothing's happening to it. So these two contacts are connected as the pen displays. So normally closed, when the switch is in this position, these two are connected. NO stands for normally open, meaning it's not connected to anything. When you flip the switch or you energize the relay, you now have connected what is normally open, but since it's energized, it's closed, to your common. Now this side is open. So let's say we had a light connected here. When, I, when the relay is non-energized, when it is off, the light is off. These two contacts are not connected. When you energize the relay, it'll flip over to the other side and the light bulb would turn on. Now, how do you make the relay do that? There's these two terminals on the other side of the relay, probably you won't be able to see. They're labeled as 85 and 86. These are your energizing ports. When you connect voltage to these two terminals, you will engage the relay. You will turn the relay on or, in essence, flip the switch. So if you had, say, when the relay is non-energized, these two contacts are closed. So let's say you have a green light bulb here and a red light bulb here. When nothing's happening on the relay, the green light bulb is going to be on. When you energize the relay or put the power to it to turn the switch, you are going to disconnect the green light bulb and you're going to turn on the red light bulb because now we've turned the switch to this way. We've made these two contacts. Hopefully this has made a little bit of sense to you guys. Hopefully you'll understand how the relays work. And uh, they come in all different styles. I kind of said this at the beginning. You can get them in to en this energizing piece. You can get them in 12 volt DC, 24 volt, 48 volt, 96 volt. Uh, you can go to AC 110. Uh, I mean, there's just any kind of relay you can imagine. Whatever your application needs to energize the relay or flip the switch, that's they come in all different sizes. You can, many different providers will get them for you. Any industrial shop, Granger, or McMaster, those guys will carry them, and just for just about any application. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick, the reason why we might use a relay is, say I've got a switch inside my truck, a dash switch, and I want to flip this switch, and it needs to turn on a set of super high power lights that I have that consume 50 amps of power. Well, if I wanted to make them run off of that switch, the switch that I install in my dash would have to be a really big switch that can handle 50 amps of power. Well, that's going to take some really big wire. I'm going to have to run that into the truck. I'm going to have to get a really big switch. And then I'm going to have to run that wire back out to the lights, and the switch actually controls the power. Well, if you put a relay in, uh, say you've got a relay. I think these are 30 amp or 50 amp or something. So let's say I want to put a relay in underneath the dash, 
or under underneath the hood of the truck, let's say, and this is what's actually going to control the load. These two, these terminals down here. Now to actually trigger the lights to come on, I can run a very small switch into my dash, and I can run just a little tiny switch, and I only need to run, say, some small, you know, 18 gauge wire or something, rather than some big old 8 gauge wire into the truck. So now when I flip the switch, it energizes the relay, which flips the switch over and turns on my big old headlights or honks my big horn if you got some kind of electric compressor on your horn or turns on some device that uses a very high amp load. It makes no sense to run big old wires into your truck if you can have a relay do it for you. In my application on my truck, I have the normally closed connected to the fuel pump. Well, when the pressure comes on on my, my other fuel system, and as soon as the pressure is up and the temperature is up and everything tells the relay to flip, the relay flips over and what that will do is it disconnects my stock fuel pump from running and I happen to have on this side a light. So when, it, when the relay is energized, it sends a light on my display, comes up and tells me that the, energy, the relay has been energized and now I know my stock pump has been cut off. So you can hook it up that way. If you just don't do anything with normally open, it's pretty much an on-off switch. Hopefully this has cleared some stuff up for you guys. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. I'll be glad to help out as much as I can. Thank you. Have a good day.